Hello. Hello. Okay, can you see me? Can yes. you see me? Okay, so we are going to do a story all about how did that get in my lunchbox. So I'm just going to wait and see does anybody come on. Is there any, any, any viewers yet, Maggie? Oh yeah, we've a few, have we? Hi everybody, how's everybody doing? Do you like my uh, chef's hat? Oh yeah. Okay, you can turn it around now. You can lie, uh, do you like my chef's hat? I found that at the bottom of the dress-up box this morning. It's mine. <laughs> um, yes, how did that get in my lunchbox? So I love reading um, stories about food that give um, a really positive spin on food to children. So I read the last week I read the one, I'll never not ever eat a tomato. And um, I'm always looking for stories and books that portray food in a very positive light. I'm not talking about uh, like cakes and buns and sweets and cakes and all that kind of stuff because there's lots of, um, there are lots of stories out there that have those included in them. But I'm talking about food that, um, oh thanks Aoife. <laughs> I'm talking about food that, uh, stories that have um, healthy food in them. So this one, how did that get in my lunchbox? Also, Maggie, are you doing camera? Yeah. You can put the light on me now. Oops. Um, so my camera woman is still learning. How do I, how do I turn it off? I don't know, does it look really odd? No. Okay. Um, the other thing that I love about this book in particular is that it talks about where food comes from. There. And that's a little bit of a passion of mine um, because I think realistically work. kids don't really know where food comes from a lot of the time. So I was telling a story there recently about um, I was doing a little workshop. Now they were with preschoolers, they are quite young. And we were talking about cheese and I was saying to the kids, oh, where does cheese come from? Expecting them to say it might come from cows. But no, the answer I got was that it comes from the garage. So, plenty of work to be done there on oh, food well, education. Do because some people might do their grocery shopping in the garage. So. so anyway, without further ado, how did I get in my lunchbox? We're going to start reading this book. Okay, it is uh, available. I've got it on Amazon if anybody is looking to buy it. So, can you read that, Maggie? One of the best parts of the day is when you lift the lid of your lunchbox to see what's inside. Your parents have packed in with lots of tasty things they to eat. They probably got all the food from the grocery store, but the food doesn't grow doesn't grow in stores. So where did it come from before? It was in the store. So where did your food come from before it actually got into the shops? How did this food get into the shops? So we're going to look at bread and cheese, tomatoes, carrots. I'm going to skip over the chocolate chip cookie because I don't have any. Oranges and we're going to skip over the apple juice because I also biscuits. don't have any. So... How did the bread in your sandwich get into your lunchbox? So we have some bread here. Da, da, da. How did that go from being a plant in the field into that? So off you go, Maggie. How did the bread in your sandwich get in your lunchbox? A farmer planted a seed in the spring and by summer they'd grown up into tall waving wheat from fat, ripe grains at the tip of every stalk. The farmer cut the wheat with giant combine harvester. So here's the big combine harvester here. And it's cutting all these, see these little bits of here? You might see them if you're driving around the countryside, you might see them growing in fields. They're big, big, tall. They're usually golden. Um, and that is the wheat. Harvester and sent it to a flower mill. So here we go over to the flower. The mill. miller grounds the grains to the, into the flour and truck to the flour to the to a bakery so that's the grains going to the flour the yeah. baker mixes the flour with water sugar and yeast kneads it into soft squishy dough and bakes it in the very hot oven that's the water the sugar and the yeast that okay. makes that so basically we get the little grains 
of wheat here and it goes into this big machine that pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds and comes out as flour as we know it. And different types of flour get different types of processing. So sometimes the flour mightn't be, um, they might only take off um, some of the outer bit and that makes it whole grain flour, whole meal flour. This flour here though, it's white, so it's been thoroughly ground. And it goes to the baker and the baker mixes it all up with, what does he mix it with Maggie? Water, sugar and yeast. Water, sugar and yeast. And then he puts it into his pans or his flour. Hang on. Oh, okay. You just do it. You just... And da da da. Out came fresh loaves of bread ready to send to the store. Take a bite of the bread in your sandwich. Mmm. Crusty on the outside of the soft in the middle. Okay. So we here's the sandwich we made earlier. So Maggie's going to have a little bite. Here's our lunchbox. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Here you go, Maggie. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll do, I'll do it. So you take the sandwich. This is it. So Maggie's going to take a little bite of her sandwich. Mm. <laughs> Tasty. Tasty? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So all we did for that sandwich. Oh, we'll do the cheese next. We're gonna do the cheese next. Oh. Yeah. So there's got that is a cheese sandwich. So we're gonna talk about how where cheese comes from next. We have a look at the cheese, Maggie. Dun dun dun. How does cheese get in your sandwich in your lunchbox? So Maggie, where does cheese come from? Definitely not the garage. The garage. Where you go with your garage? Oh, garage. Yeah. Garage. <laughs> Where does it come from? Cows. Cows. Yes. The garage. <laughs> okay. Your cheese was once milk that came from a cow. A farmer milked the cows, and a tanker from the dairy came to collect the milk. One. In so let's have a look. Here's the cows up here. <laughs> Here's the cows. Making all the milk. And they're they're being milked. See, there's their the milk coming out of their udders. Oh, they dear. use a machine to to uh, pull all the milk out of the cows. Dun dun dun. And there's a happy looking cow there. Look. The cows are milked. How many times a day, Maggie? Hmm. Twice a day. So first thing in the morning, and then around tea time. Okay. One in the dairy. In the dairy, cheese makers warm up the milk. Two. And added bacteria to make it turn sour and thick. Thick. Okay, so here, cheese makers adding in some bacteria to make the milk turn sour. Three. Then they add a substance that animals use to digest milk called rennet. Yeah, so then they add in some rennet, which is here. And it changed again into bits called curds floating in whey. Okay, so when you add the rennet, it kind of helps to separate it out into curds and whey. So like little Miss Muffet, sat on her tuffet, eating her. Curds and whey. Curds and whey. Five. They drained off, off the whey, chopped up the rubbery curds, added some salt and pressed them into blocks. Okay, so they take what this is, which is the milk, which has had the rennet added and the bacteria. And they drain off the whey, which they then, then turn into whey powder, which is very popular at the moment. And they take the curds, they add some salt, and they put them into a mould. Like any normal mould, they press it down, like if you were making um, okay. flapjacks or cake or something like that. And that turns it into cheese. But what do they do first? They leave it. They store the blocks for months until the cheese is ripe. Bite into your cheese. It's creamy and smooth, but tasty too, and tingly in your tongue. True. Yeah. So cheese comes in lots of different varieties. So the next time you're in the supermarket, which may be after you've done all this lockdown stuff, because whenever, um, have a look and see if you can find cheeses that are mature, extra mature, maybe try some different cheeses 
and see try um, some blue cheese try some blue cheese yeah so that's got um more of a bacteria added to it and um see if you can detect the difference in taste between the kind of younger cheeses and the older cheeses the longer uh, it's left to mature the stronger the cheese becomes now we're going on to dun, dun, dun. How, um, how did your tomatoes get in your lunchbox Last summer, your tomatoes were growing on a big tunnel full of tomato plants. This is called a... Do you know what called? A tunnel? Yeah, what kind of tunnel? A po polytunnel. This a is poly called tunnel. a polytunnel, yeah. So you might see these around the countryside if you're out for a drive. They're um, sometimes green. No, they're not usually green. They're mostly... They're um, more or less... Um, see-through generally so this is a polytunnel and they use these to protect the plants from anything yeah basically. from the frost and all the from bad the weather and the bad yeah weather. and to keep them warm mm -hmm. okay so yeah go on as the sun and the warmth of the plants grew tall and bloomed with yellow flowers as each flower died a tiny green tomato fruit began to grow from its middle see so here's the little um here's the little fruit beginning to form so here's the flower and then it blooms. And then when it dies, this the is the little tomato starts to form. So that forms there. Da, da, da. It turns out it forms to green. So green to orange. We don't have an orange. We have a yellow one though. And then to red. But they can be in any color. Yep. So what were, we, was it, what were we saying before? That there are how many different varieties of tomatoes are there, Maggie? 250. 250 different varieties of tomatoes. About. I got that right. Yeah. <laughs> um, homeschooling at its best here. Um, so yeah, there's about, there is about 250 different varieties of tomatoes. We only get, uh, see about, in our supermarkets, probably 10 different varieties. Um, but it is better than when I was growing up in the... There's probably only like one. When there was only really salad tomatoes. I don't know if anybody is old enough to remember that. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different varieties in the, in the shops now. Even in Tesco and the likes, you can get tomatoes like this. Um, different little colored tomatoes, little uh, plum tomatoes. So um, for parents who are watching, a great thing that you can do with the kids, a great little activity you can do with the kids is the next time you get in and go into the supermarket, See how many different varieties of tomatoes you can find have a look at the names of them and maybe buy a couple of different varieties and taste them and see if there's a difference in taste see if this they taste any different they also okay. come in bigger versions yeah they do indeed so there's different we sizes. have a big red one here we do have a big red one yeah and you can get big big ones in orange green yeah and yellow yeah. Okay, so what happens after the tomato? So, so we're down here, the red tomato, it's ripe, it's ready to go. Day by day, the plant sucked up the water and the tomato swelled from green to orange to red, just like here. Just like here. Green to orange to red. When bunches of bright scarlet tomatoes dangled from the branches, the grower picked them. One, sorted them, two, packed them, three, and then sent to the store. Pop one in your mouth and squish the sweet sour juice out. Tomato. My tomato tester. My mouth. Yummy. It did. It went pop in the mouth. It went pop in our mouth. Okay, fantastic. So we have the plants and the little flowers. And the flowers, when they die off, the inside of the flower turns into a tomato. And then when they are ripe, they're picked. And they're brought to the sorting place mm -hmm. and they're examined and sorted and they're put into boxes and then they're sent to the supermarket. And when that's you get you tomatoes, they come like this, but they can come with a big stalk connecting them all sometimes. They can, yeah, because they've just come straight off the vine. That's how they grow. They'll grow on the vine like that, all attached together like that. Okay, so that's our tomato. How did your carrots, carrots get in your lunchbox? Here's our carrot. Dun, dun, dun. Big, long, orange carrot. 
Okay, how did your carrot get in your lunchbox? Last spring, your carrots were growing in a field on a vegetable farm. You wouldn't have seen any carrots then, just long rows of feathery leaves. Oh yeah, thanks Maggie. As the leaves grew taller in the summer sun, each carrot root pushed deeper into the earth, soaking up water and turning orange. By late summer, they had swelled so much that the top of the carrot poked out from the earth. So they go from tiny, tiny, to a bit bigger, to a bit bigger, to a bit lot bigger, to huge, to humongous. What's the thing? Pickers pull them out. Pickers pull them out. So you might see, you can now see carrots like this with the stalks on them. Um, I know Tesco sell them. And why don't most shops sell them like that, Maggie? Because they cost more, they take up more space, they're heavier. No one wants them to be like For lots of those reasons, yes. yes. Yeah, it's all about the economics for the big supermarkets. Um, however, if you do get them like this, with the tops on them, they're great fun. You can use them as a tickler. The leaves are really soft and tickly. Um, and you can actually make pesto out of the uh, carrot tops. Yep. So, what then happens the carrots, then when you pick the carrots? Then the carrots are washed and packed into trucks. So they're bite, washing this massive big machine, look at that. Bite into your carrot, see just how sweet and crunchy it, it tastes. Okay, so Maggie is going to peel her carrots. With the safety food cutter. It doesn't have metal blades, so it won't hurt you at all. It's kind of kind of nice to do it. I like it. And it's very easy and safe. Okay, you need to move more into the... Into the game. Yeah. Move into the game. I didn't ask her to do that, by the way. She didn't ask me to do that. So we're chopping away, peeling away, and then Maggie's going to chop some up and pop it into her mouth. Her mouth, and then the rest into the lunchbox. I'll take that, thank you. Chop, chop, chop. Cut the top off because yeah. no one likes to eat the top or the bottom. Then we go chop, chop, chop. With our kitty sweet cutter. It doesn't cut. And I like it. It's nice. And massaging. Massaging? Yes. It's a massaging knife. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm joking, it's for cutting, but it feels nice. So here's our carrots all ready to pop into our lunch boxes. One needs to go in my mouth as well. And Maggie's going to pop some in her mouth and we're going to pop some into the lunch box. Oh, we never put the uh, tomatoes into. So we'll pop these and we pop the tomatoes in as well. Ta-da! Fantastic. Now the last thing we're going to pop into our lunch box is a clementine. Also known as an orange. Or mandarin, whatever you want to call it. How did a clementine get in your lunchbox? Early in the summer, the trees in, in the clementine grove were full of sweet-smelling waxy flowers, said these. As the flowers die, a tiny green clementine berry began to grow on each of them. Just like that. Maybe that a bit closer to the camera. Mm -hmm. yeah. The clementine swelled in the warm sun, turning from green to yellow. By the time the by the time cooler winter weather arrived, the clementines had turned orange and were so heavy and full of juice that they might that they made the branches drop. Pickers climbed ladders to reach them. They had to wear gloves so they didn't bruise the tender fruit inside the skin. They washed them and packed them, and the grower sent the boxes to trucks to the market. It's easy to peel a clementine, then all you have to do is pop the juicy piece in your mouth and bite. Most clementines are seedless. No so, one likes tell us how, how, tell clementines us. with seeds, do they? No. So tell us again what happens. So, they're waxy flowers, flowers just like the tomatoes. Yeah, just like the tomatoes, yeah. Yeah. And then they grow, and then once they die... They turn into seeds and they go from orange, no, they go from green 
to yellow, like there's a yellow in there somewhere, and then to orange, just like the tomatoes changing colours. And then since they're so heavy and full of juice, they fall down, they made the branches droop, and then they're picked, put in, washed, put in boxes, and shipped out to you. Yeah. So do you want to peel your clementine there, Maggie? Yep. Super easy to peel. Super easy. That's why they're called easy peelers. So who makes your lunch, Maggie, when, we, when you're at school? I do. Okay. So I get my kids to make their lunches all the time because... Now Maggie's not... Uh, no, Maggie is 10, nearly 11. And Charlie is eight, he's just turned nine, but they've been making their lunches for probably two years. Maybe uh, longer. Maybe longer, so. I have been longer anyway. I think Charlie made, started making his lunch when he was six. So the reason why I get them to make their own lunches is for a number of different reasons. A, so I don't have to do it. Top reason. B, because um, they tend to eat, oh, Maggie's gonna eat her mandarin. B, because they tend to eat what they make themselves, so they'll only make what they like. Um, and C, I just have in the house what I want them to eat, so they don't, they can't take anything that's not in the house. So I generally just have fruits and veggies and yogurts and bread, tuna, tuna lots of tuna sandwiches here. Um, some ham. Sometimes. sometimes some ham, sometimes I'll make a chicken salad, but um, they make them themselves. So it's great for their independence, it's great for their fine motor skills, it's great for their cooking skills. Um, yeah, it's lots of different reasons. So there we go, that's our book. How did that get in my lunchbox? So here's our lunchbox. Here's our lunchbox all ready to go. We have the oranges, mandarin, climatine. What? Yeah. Then we have the Half eaten sandwich, Half eaten me. sandwich, yeah. The carrots and the green, yellow, and red tomatoes. Yep. Hi, Aoife, could you share some useful recipes later for school lunches? I will um, put up a blog. I have a blog on my website about school lunches, I think. So I will tag you in that. Okay, so thank you so much. Bye, thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody. So what are, we, oh, actually, what are we making tomorrow, Maggie? We are making... Weetabix Power Balls. Woohoo! Okay, so we're making Weetabix Power Balls that involve obviously Weetabix, um, chia seeds, dates. So we got dates in Aldi this morning. They were 99 cents for pretty much all that, the quantity that you need. Um, cacao powder, which is kind of the less processed version of cocoa powder. Also known as Coco. Coco the dog, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, and you'll need a blender for those as well. Okay, thanks Aoife. Um, and we shall see you tomorrow. Same time, Bye. same place. Thank Bye, thank you. Peace out. <laughs>